tuned in with us on this day. It is my prayer that you had a great week. And even if you didn't have a great week, you've made it. You made it this far. And we're here today to give God the praise, the glory, and the honor. I want to encourage you also to, this is our family Sunday where we're celebrating gift of family in worship. If we were here today, we would have a uh, grizzly on the couch. We would have had a great breakfast. But because of the situation, we will not do that. But we are bringing you a uh, family Sunday. Let's open up with a word of prayer and ask God to bless this day. Amen. God, we thank you for this day. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. It was grace that brought us safe this far and it is that same grace that's going to lead us on god we thank you for this opportunity to be able to reach your people through this via via streaming we ask your blessing over this whole service today that anyone and everyone who tunes in today will receive a word from you will be encouraged somebody who don't know you will be saved we thank you for this time and we thank you for what you're going to do today have your way have your way have your way this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you are familiar with uh, what we do on Family Sundays. With no further ado, I want to bring Tiffany Brown up, and she will introduce to us what we're going to do on Family Sunday. Again, thank you for joining us with us, and I present to you Sister Tiffany Brown. Amen. Put your hands together for Tiffany Brown. Amen. Amen. Hey, <laughs> hey, what's up, family? How y'all doing out there? I miss y'all so much. Mwah. Listen, I am here to introduce no other than the one and only. I need you to stand on your feet, clap your hands in your home, make some noise for no other than On The Couch with Grizzly! Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? We'd like to welcome you to On the Couch with Grizzy. Yeah, got out the sink for a minute. I would like to welcome you to On the Couch with Grizzy. This one today is a little bit different, y'all. Why? Because of what's going on in today's world. I tell you, you go out there right You go out there right now, there's nothing but police and uh, fire trucks. So... Be careful out there. What I want to say to you today is that it's been a long time without you, my friend. And I tell you all about it when I see you again. <laughs> so welcome, welcome, welcome. I, uh, I asked my uh, grandfather, I said, uh, Grandpa, do you need anything as this time is going on? I said, Grandpa, do you need anything? He said, boy, just get down here. I said, all right. So I rushed down there to my grandpa's house. I said, what's up, grandpa? What you need? Some, some toilet paper, some light side? What you need, grandpa? He said, boy, show me how to work the Snapchat on my phone. I said, what? He wanted Snapchat on the phone. And then granny asked for the gram. I said, granny, we can't do that. So it's people going live that have never went live before. So I want you to encourage people to sign up for that uh, Instagram and Snap so that we can stay connected with one another during this time. We're going to stay connected. So let's stay connected, guys. All right? Uh, we haven't met in a long time in this way. Last uh, fifth Sunday was in um, December. So i just uh, like to say hello and follow up with you. So uh, now we're going to transition into a game. I want you to play this game. And you all at home can participate in this game. It's called Kings of Kings or Kings of Rap. Now, this online participatory game is going to be played with myself and our uh, pastoral resident, Patrick Riley. Patrick Riley is going to be online with you all, and you will have opportunity to type in your questions. Now, whoever types in the question first, their point will go on the uh, board. Now, this is Patrick versus the world, all right? So I want you to prepare, be uh, prepared to text and type in your answers in the chat log. 
that you see streaming. And if you want to test to see if it works, go on and say hello right now. Just text and see if it works. Just say, type in hello. Type in good morning, family. It's working, it's working, it's working. We're locked up. We're locked up, y'all. We on lockdown. And I heard someone say, put something on my books. Put something on my books, please. We on lockdown, y'all. So during this time of lockdown, we're going to have an awesome time. I want you to just stick with us for a few minutes, all right? Now, if you're ready, we're going to go to the game. I'm going to ask Patrick Riley to grab his mic and uh, say uh, good morning to the people. Good morning, family. Cool. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Pat. Uh, you will be facing the world today. Is there anything that you would like to let them know? I'm not going to take it easy on y'all. Ooh. Did you hear that? He's not going to take it easy. So I need you to text real quick before he does. All right? So is this a rap lyric or is it a scripture out of the Bible? That's what you need to know. God, show me the way because the devil is trying to break me down. I'll say it again. God, show me the way because the devil is trying to break me down. God, show me the way because the devil is trying to break me down. All right, we have an answer. We have an answer. Go ahead. Go ahead with your answer. T. Trice says it's a rap lyric. It's a rap lyric by whom, T. Trice? Patrick has time to steal if he know who's the author. Nola Faulkner says king of rap. Who, who might that be, Nola? Looking for a name here. Looking for a name. Like, if it was David, David would have, you know, we would have said it's David in Psalms 27. Go ahead. Go ahead. Misha Powell says Jesus walked by Kanye. Oh, Misha Powell. All right. Jesus walks. We got one for the world. One for the world. Y'all see that on there? Y'all got one for the world. One for the world. One for the world. Yep. Kanye West. God, show me the way because the devil is trying to break me down. Some of us thought that was David. I know. I know. I know. All right, we'll go to the next one. I'm feeling like the world's against me, Lord. Ooh. I'm feeling like the world's against me, Lord. Any takers? I'm feeling like the world's against me, Lord. All right. We have one. We have one. What? Shayla Morgan says that is scripture. Shayla Morgan said that is scripture. All right, Shayla, where can we find this scripture? I think we have something brewing from Patrick. Patrick is over there brewing. Brewing. He's brewing. He's simmering. I want you to simmer down like the noodles before you put the seasoning in it. Yeah. I know it sounds like a lament. Okay. Talk to me. Sounds like a lament. Okay, okay. That's, that's very poetic. Sounds like a lament. The, I'm feeling like the world's against me, Lord. So, does anybody have it? Nobody has this one. This is going to be a zero. Let's go see this. <laughs> and it was Jay-Z, Shayla. Shayla, it was Jay-Z. <laughs> Karenina Warren says it's Jay-Z, rap by Jay-Z. Oh, yeah, yeah, rap by Jay-Z. All right. Amen, amen. So we're going to try this one more time so no one will get the point right there. It's going to be a zero right there, all right? 
The yeah, next I, I one. I got to give me a point. I need a point. Come on. Come on. Come on, Pat. Get you a point. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Anybody? Any takers? Excuse me. Excuse me. We interrupt this program with an important message. Attention, Macedonia family and friends. Thank you for tuning in to Macedonia Baptist Church Family Sunday live stream edition of On the Couch with Grizzy. Our top priority is the mental, physical, and spiritual health of you, your families, and our staff. Accordingly, please keep a distance of six feet from those around you. No kisses, no hugs, no handshakes, nothing. Wash your hands frequently for at least 20 seconds, but do not leave the water running. Even though it's allergy season, do not touch your eyes, nose, or mouth. Try not to cough or sneeze, but if you must, please cover your mouth with your sleeve. Quarantine yourself if you develop symptoms or if you get an attitude from simply being locked down. Above all else, have faith in God. Thank you for your cooperation. Oh, man, we were broken through by the announcements. Thank you. I hope y'all got that. The announcements coming over the airwaves. They, they're going to do that periodically. So just stick with us, you know. <laughs> Make sure you pay attention to the announcements, the commercials, and most of all, the King of Kings. Y'all ready? All right. I gave you some time to get that in. So I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Any takers? A scripture, Grizzy. Uh, scripture, Grizzy, from Pat. Uh, where, where might we find that scripture, if it is indeed scripture? It's in one of the Gospels. Mm. It's in one of the Gospels. I remember seeing it somewhere. Okay, uh, okay. Oh, it's stolen. It got stolen. Go ahead with you. Go ahead, sister. I'm seeing Luke 10, 18. Luke 10, 18. So it is scripture. That's from the world. And y'all got two. Pat, zero. Pat, you got to come on. You said it was somewhere, but they gave us where? Luke chapter 10, verses 18. That was Jesus, y'all. Nola Faulkner. All right, Nola. Putting them, putting them coins up there. Putting them coins on the board. All right. You are from... Beneath, I am from above. Hey, hey, I like that. Uh, you are from beneath. <laughs> I am from above. <laughs> Scripture or rap lyric? King of raps or kings of kings? Come on, somebody. You are from beneath. I am from above. All right, we got one. We got one from the world. Go ahead. I got scripture from Tim Robinson and Antoine Richardson. Scri Nola, Nola Faulkner says it's John 8.23. Nola Faulkner said it's John 8.23. All right. Let us uh, see. Pat, you have anything before we do this? Somebody got to be cheating out there. He says somebody in the world is faster than he is while he's sitting here. Translation, translation. <laughs> Nola got a different type of Google or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Goodness Nola. Gracious. 823, John. Boy, you killing it. They Three said, to zero. They said that they are not of the world, Grizzy. Ah, oh, my bad. Three for uh, the worshipers. That's what that W stands for, guys, worshipers. Worshippers, there we go. All right, worshippers. So, worshippers have three, and Pat has zero. All right, that's one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. Worshippers. All right, I am the nuclear nucleus, nuclearly. <laughs> I am the nucleus. I am the nucleus. I am the nucleus. Say it three times. I am the nucleus. You got it at home. You got it, guys. <laughs> I am the nucleus. <laughs> I am the nucleus. Who's this? I am the nucleus. Who's that? Yes. Is that a rap lyric or is it? So Pat says it's rap by who, Pat? Uh, my guess, Grizzy, would be Kid Cudi. 
Kid Cuddy, Pat is trying to put them coins up there. So worshipers, what, what do you have to say, worshipers? Cheryl Thomas says it's rap by Kanye West. Rap by Kanye, and Patrick says Kid Cuddy. Let's run that back. Oh, it's Kanye. <laughs> Kanye, Pat, you, oh my goodness. This game is rigged. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Oh my goodness. This is kind of, hey, so it's four to zero, Pat. What are we gonna do? It's crunch time. It's crunch time, Pat. Do I still got time to come back? Is it like a bonus round somewhere? Bonus or? track. <laughs> yeah, it is a bonus track. But we're gonna keep maneuvering through this terrain. Let's go to the next one. All right. I walk through the valley of Chasado of which I walk through the valley of Cha. Shy, where death is. Ooh, that might be the message translation. <laughs> ESV, I walk through the valley of shy, where death is. Is that a rap lyric or is that indeed scripture? I walk through the valley of shy, where death is. Go ahead. Shayla Morgan says it's a lyric. Shayla Morgan, who's that lyric from? Pat has a chance to steal. I, I think it's a lyric as well. From where might we find the lyric? Oh, we got a we, online worshiper. She, online worshiper. Shayla Morgan says Chance the Rapper. Chance the Rapper number three. Let's throw it up there. Kanye. Kanye, Kanye. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you hear me say Kanye? Oh, no. That was a little late, Patrick. I'm <laughs> sorry. You're trying to sneak that one in. It looks like you're going to have zero. I got a question, Grizzly. Why you like Kanye West so much? Every lyric been Kanye West. <laughs> because if you don't know who it is, you should just guess Kanye, huh? <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt, guess Kanye. <laughs> Good observation, but no, that's not it. We had some Jay-Z up here and some Kid Cudi, like you said earlier. <laughs> All right. How about that? So... I walk through the valley of the shot where death is. Kanye be killing them with them Bible verses. All right. We may go to the next one. Give Pat a little time. But I know, my Lord, I am God's own. Mm -mm -mm. But I know, my Lord, I am God's own. Patrick, you ready? They ready for you. They said Pat can have this one. Go ahead. Worshippers online. No, Pat said it's scripture. It says scripture. Pat says it's scripture. Where at? Where at, Pat? Where where might we find this in the It's in one of those 66 books. Okay, talk to us. <laughs> talk to us. It's in one of the 66. He's really trying to get some coins, y'all. He wants some coins up here. Right now it's more than none. So let us, let us, uh-oh, somebody didn't tap in. Go ahead with your tap in. Joyce Wells says the scripture. Joyce said it's scripture. All right, let's see. Is it scripture or is it Kanye again, Patrick? And it's Little Wayne. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Nah, I, what song is that? Because I know Lil nah, Wayne. No, nah, no, you <laughs> said it's scripture. It ain't. It's in the 66 books. <laughs> it's in the 66 books, y'all. So I want somebody to find this hey, for me. Hey, book, chapter, verse, Grizzly. <laughs> we <laughs> need it. Book, chapter, verse. Where is this at in the, in the Bible, Pat? <laughs> Joyce. <laughs> it's Lil Weezy. Y'all listen to Lil Wayne or listening to the Bible? Talk to me, somebody. <laughs> Oh, why? Okay. Uh-huh. Lil Wayne said, but I know my God. I am God's own. See, y'all didn't think it could come out of uh, the mouth of Lil Wayne, huh? Y'all didn't think he had it in him. Yeah, that's it. It's 66. It's scripture. All right. <laughs> it was Lil Wayne. I am, I am a God. Come on. Come on, Pat. I see you. I see you. I am a God. I am a God. Grizzly, I'm going to say, that's rap. 
That's rap. Uh, any uh, reason you would say that's rap? Just a little bit I know about the Bible. Who would be in there saying, I am a God? When God's reference says, I am God, he is God, love God, I am a God. So that sounds like something somebody rapping would say. Okay, we got, we got a worshiper. And my guess is Kanye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nola my, Faulkner said it's Kanye. No. Joyce Wells says it's Kanye. For real? Yeah. Karenina Warren says it's Kanye. Olivia Jones says it's Kanye. Brandon Johnson says it's Kanye. <laughs> Kyla Horn said it's Come Kanye. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Come on, worshipers. Come on, everybody. Kanye, what are you going to say, Patrick? I'm saying it's uh, Kanye, Jay-Z, <laughs> Lil Wayne, <laughs> Kid Cudi. Uh, who else? Uh, Cover all Jester your bases. Rapper. Cover all. <laughs> I am. <laughs> y'all got it right. Y'all got it right at home. Y'all are killing it. Pat here is struggling with zero. It's five to uh, zero right now, y'all. Yeah. It's five to zero. I don't get a point? Nah, you guessed. Wow. They said Kanye. I'm here flat out. You were saying Jay-Z, Kid Cudi, uh, all them people. Go ahead. Online. Brandon Johnson said the song title is I am a God by Kanye. Yep. See? See, Pat? They got it. They was ready. We have one more up there because this is going to be, oh, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Anybody? Any, any any takers? Kanye? Go ahead, my sister. Nobody? Patrick's mother said, regroup, Patrick. It's all right, baby. <laughs> Thank you, mama. You can always count on the love of a mama. Thank you, mama. I love my mama. <laughs> yes. Amen. Go well, ahead. Short, Short Thomas says it's a scripture and it's found in Luke. It's a scripture found in Luke. Brandon Johnson says Luke 28. Come on, somebody, online worshipers. Let's go. Luke 28. Luke 11. Mark 11.33. Is that what that is? Yep. So, those to the online worshipers. Sure it does. Yes, you do, Pat. All right, we got one more. All the all these all eat all these evils come from inside and defile a person. Hmm. All these evils come from inside and defile a person. Now, is this scripture? Is it rap? Is it jazz? Go ahead, online. Go ahead. Andrea and Calvin Jameson said Jesus said that. What? Get out. Where at? Pat, huh? where, where, where is this? Is well, it? If Jesus said it, it's in one of the Gospels. Okay. You got Matthew, Mark. Talk to me. Luke. Go ahead. Or John. Synoptic Gospels. Oh, we got it online, Pat. You, you was going, you was guessing again, Pat. They're guessing. Okay. Nola Faulkner says it's Mark seven twenty three. So does Brandon Johnson and Karenina Warren and Wallace Wiley and <laughs> Ashley Williams and Olivia Jones and Joyce Wells. Go ahead, online worshipers. And Kyla Horn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's six, seven. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They got seven. Pat has zero. Mm, mm, mm. Let's go to the next one. Grizzly. Mercy yeah. dropping tomorrow. Mercy, mercy, dro mercy Grizzly. Mercy, mercy dropping tomorrow. I'm yelling, Uncle, <laughs> Uncle, Mercy, something. <laughs> we should be family. They should give me a point or two. They should say we gonna donate some points. Mercy <laughs> dropping tomorrow. <laughs> mercy, guess what? Mercy is dropping tomorrow. Come on, Pat, where you at? It's rap. Pat says it's rap, guys. Cause mercy. Is dropping tomorrow. Go ahead, my sister. Torrance Allen says it's rap. 
T. Allen says it's rap. Pat says it's rap. Well, let us see if it's rap. Oh, you know who it is, Kanye. <laughs> Sandra Johnson said Kanye. Kanye, yeah, it's Kanye. It is rap by Kanye. It's eight to zero. Let's keep going. Once again, I want to be clear. I don't understand the rules of this game. <laughs> I am the first and the last. Pat, you got one point because you did say it was right. Pat got one. I'll give it up for Pat. Thank you. Thank you. Pat has one point. Yep. Pat has one point. All right. We are moving forward. I am the first and the last. Somebody got that? I'm the first and the last. That's scripture. That scripture? Where might I find that scripture? Pat says the scripture. Anybody online want to chime in? Anybody online? Pat says the scripture. Everyone is saying the scripture. Everyone's saying the scripture. All right, let us see if that is indeed scripture. Ashley Williams says it's Isaiah 44, 6. All right. Old Testament concealed it. New Testament revealed it. It's also in Revelations 1, 17. Yeah, I am the first, the last. So both parties get... Two point. Both parties get one point. All right. Bonus round. Okay. But take part. I've overcome the world. Scripture. Scripture. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Facebook Live. I'm in. Facebook Live. How y'all doing out there? All right, we got somebody online talking back to us. Tanya Taylor says it's scripture. Tanya Taylor says this is scripture. Pat? Scripture, it's scripture. It's scripture. Pat versus the world. I mean, the worshipers. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Scripture. Uh-oh. Brandon Johnson said it's John 16, 33. Woo! Yep. John 16, 33. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. All right. That's 10 to 3. 10 to 3. 10 to 3, Pat. Mm, mm, mm. Do we have another? I am not a human being. Mm. Is this scripture or is it a rap lyric? I am not a human being. Go ahead, somebody. Pat is ready. Pat fully loaded. It's, it's rap. It's rap. Pat says it's rap. Rap from whom, rap. Patrick? Um, I am not a human being. Probably said I am a Martian. Uh, Little Wayne. Little Wayne. Little Wayne. I am not a human being. Goes to Patrick in the house. Give it up for Pat. Give it up for Pat. Don't call it a comeback. Hey. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. I'm not a human, little way. The next one, please. Nothing in life is promised except death. Ooh, nothing in life is promised except death. Now, is this scripture? Is it King of Kings of Kings or Kings of Rap? Nothing in life is promised. Except death. Any takers? Go ahead. We got some. We got a worshiper. Leonetta Brown says it's rap. It is Donna it rap. Peyton says it's rap. From whom? Shay and Jay say it's scripture. Okay. <laughs> okay. Pat. Scripture and where? Book, chapter, verse. It's rap. I say it's rap. Pat says it's rap. Online says it's scripture. Is that safe to say? Pat? It's rap! Kanye, again, I told you, Kanye got them bars. So that goes to Pat or worshipers? I can't remember. I got, I got turned around. I, uh, my guess is Pat. Okay, Pat. It goes to Pat. Pat is constantly coming up, y'all. He's coming up. He has five, y'all. He really has five to y'all 11. Yes? Misha Powell said that we will not call it a comeback. 
We will not call it a comeback. And I, see, another thing with Sharice, why are you reading all Misha's comments? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to understand. Everybody else's comments, you keep reading Misha's. Okay. All right. Then we have one more. <laughs> this is going to tie break the tie break. <laughs> and if the God be in me, then the king I be. <laughs> and if the God be in me, then the king. I be. Is that a rap song? Is that a Bible verse? What you going to say? What you going to say? Y'all have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten to five right now. Go ahead, online worshipers. T. Trice says it's rap by Kanye. It's rap by Kanye. What do you say, Pat? We'll give you a chance to answer. I believe it's rap by Kanye as well. <laughs> Rap by Kanye. Ah, it's actually by Run DMC. <laughs> it is rap, but it's by Run DMC, guys. <laughs> All right, so we're going to tally these points real quick. Looks like that uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for the worshipers and five for Pat. So guess what, worshipers? You win ten to five. Worshipers got it again. Pat, we see you next time. Pat versus the worshipers. Stay tuned for much more coming at you. Oh, we got one more announcement. We would just want to acknowledge some of the people on Facebook Live. Tiffany Brown is watching. Portia Gill is watching. Siobhan Brooks is watching. Jay Morgan is watching. Kanisha Carter is watching. Angela Batts is watching. Candace Wise is watching. Yeah. Bernard Williams is watching. Good Green Sanai is watching. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Good morning to you all. All right. We're going to a commercial, and uh, we'll be right back with you. All right, how we doing? This is a commercial from our announcers. There's been an outbreak recently that has taken our nation by storm. Yes, it has reached a pathetic portions, right? If you have found yourself constantly thinking about it, worrying about your loved ones, finger uh, fighting over toilet paper, uh, selling hand sanitizers by the squirts, Making your children wash their hands until they turn into prunes. Counting bills while desperately looking for another nickel to rub together. Buying baby wipes when you are 22 years old, not 22 months. Grabbing your neck so that you won't grab somebody else's. My friend, you are suffering from shaken faith syndrome. Yep, shaken faith syndrome. Where I'm here to tell you about... It causes anxiety, guys. But I got something for you. It's called Jesus is the Rockazine. That's right. Jesus is my Rockazine. I'm telling you, Jesus is my Rockazine. It's all natural, omnipresent, omniscient, and it's mind regulating. It's mighty counselor. It's a lily in the valley, a bright and morning star. Yeah. Just one dose three times a day, y'all. That's morning, noon, and night. Just one dose, just one dose, three times a day, all right, for those symptoms. If you want to do some additional symptoms, we welcome that, all right? Side effects may include praying without ceasing, peace beyond understanding, forgiving those who offend you, loving your neighbor, honoring your parents, being a cheerful giver, 
taking to mountains, talking to mountains and telling them to move and also walking on water. This is Dr. Jehovah Shalom. All right. If the symptoms persist, stay to prayer. All right. Pray without ceasing. This is Dr. Jehovah Shalom and his announcements. We will now have an introductory. Yeah, did y'all enjoy that game? I did. It was very, very fun. Listen, we're gonna move. We're gonna move along. Now I get the pleasure of introducing our next guest. They have two children, a dog. They've been married for twenty years together for twenty-six years. Put your hands together. Make some noise for no other. The Ray Great. All right. We make sure we keep the six feet. All right. How we doing? Your names and uh, your occupations. Uh, Latoya Reagan, uh, administrator. Okay. Uh, Clinton Reagan, logistics uh, ADC. Okay. Cool. And I want to thank you for joining us today. Um, during this lockdown season, right? We, we're all locked in. We're locked up. Uh, is there a song that you would like to sing during this time of uh, lockdown that gets you through? Uh, well, one of the songs that I'd like to sing is He's Got the Whole World in His Hand. I'm no singer, so I'm not going to sing it. Okay, okay. <laughs> and for you, sir? One that comes to mind is, I need thee. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I need thee. Every hour with these children. Oh, with the kids, with the kids. Bless me. Oh, bless yes. me. Bless me. Yeah, yeah. Right now, my Savior. Yeah. Yeah, that's my song. Yeah, that's his song. That's bless it right me. there. Thank you, Lord, right now Ooh. with these children, with these kids. Yes. People are going live that ain't never went live before. Yep. People are teaching they never taught before. Mm -hmm. You know? So. With this going on with these parents and these kids and mm -hmm. teachers and all that, uh, had a kid talk about his uh, classwork. He told his daddy, uh, uh, the teacher called and said, well, your son ain't called and ain't, ain't done his classwork. And he said, well, you know, son, why haven't you done your classwork? Your teacher called and said you haven't done your classwork. And he says to his dad that it is called homework. And that's why he didn't do it because he's at home and he didn't want to do it because he wasn't in the classroom. Do you have to deal with any of that? Mm, mm, mm. Exactly. I just got to deal with not doing work. Not doing work at all. Mm, mm. All right. They thinking every day is an extended break. Every day is an extended break. Mm -hmm. what, what have you learned about uh, your children since you've been on lockdown? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, we learned one of them just still can't get up whether it's on lockdown or not. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that getting up out of the bed and staying up until 5 o'clock in the morning. Awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. What advice would you give to parents as, they are locked, as this lockdown continues? Be very patient. Be very patient. Because now you get an ounce of what educators go through every day when the kids are at school. You don't know my kids like you think you do. You oh, don't know your oh. kids like you. Oh, yeah. We know the kids. Right. That's what educators go through. So we're going to switch channels real quick. Uh, I'm going to talk about family real quick. And uh, 
What's a song that you would sing at a family reunion that you have to sing? It's a must sing at a family reunion. Well, I'm, I'm not going to sing it because I can't sing that well. Well, you've been doing good. Oh, man. <laughs> I think you should keep it up. It's a family affair, family reunion. Oh, okay. Family reunion, oh, no, family no, reunion. No, family no, reunion. No, no, That's no, what I, uh, y'all, y'all just gonna, y'all not gonna speed past that like it just happened. Toy was singing the one, and you were singing one. Uh, uh, What's the two songs? <laughs> we, we gonna say family, family reunion. reunion. Family, family reunion. reunion. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. How does it go? I, I really don't know. And what was the one you were singing, Toy? A family reunion. Yeah. yeah, that's my baby. A family <laughs> reunion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the one right there. That's yeah, one right there. Yeah, yeah. That that's good. That's real, <laughs> that is real good. When uh, lockdown is over, when will you invite guests back to your home? Well, I mean, they haven't stopped coming. <laughs> okay, they haven't stopped okay. coming. We've had some guests since we've been on lockdown. Yeah, yeah, stop. Time stop coming. And when is uh when is appropriate time to tell someone to leave? When they outstay their welcome. They might might, might not even come. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I love my family. I love yeah, my family, yeah. but you know, go ahead and eat your food, uh-huh. you know, say hello, shake hands and goodbye. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And see, with me, they can stay as long as they want to. Because mm-hmm. I like the company. That's good. They even make a bed upstairs. Okay. That's, a, that's awesome. As an educator uh, in your profession, how uh, has the world been affected? Uh, I would have to say it's been a huge adjustment with parents having to switch gears and become the, the teacher at home, kids having to readjust their schedules. Uh, spending a lot of time on the computer trying to manage school and the work at home with your kids too, making sure that everything is done. So it's it's affected education extremely. But when I go online and I look at all the different um, things on Twitter, you see a lot of students that are still engaged online. It's just a different way of learning now. Different way of learning, yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, I want to shift gears real quick. I want to talk about... Uh, Bible names. Names in the Bible uh, not to name kids. What would be some names out of the Bible that you would say, no, I wouldn't name a kid that? Hezekiah. Hezekiah. (laughs) Why? Because I can't spell it. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. (laughs) Any other other names you could think of? (laughs) Satan. Satan, yes, definitely Satan. Ah, okay. Well, you, you, got some, you got some people out there that act like them. <laughs> Don't name your baby Satan. I ain't going to. Oh, any, any other name? Jezebel. Jezebel. Mm-hmm. Don't name your baby. Don't name Jezebel. Jezebel. Any other names you can think of? Judas. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. That's a very good one. Judas, don't name, don't name the baby Judas. I, any other? Definitely one. Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, yes. Methuselah. Who? I, I can't even say it. See? <laughs> Methuselah? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> if it's a boy, it's Methuselah. <laughs> Whatever it is. If it's a girl, it's Something Methuselah. I can't spell or say, <laughs> I ain't going to name you. What about uh, Gamora? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> No, that wouldn't, be, that wouldn't be a good one either. Delilah. Mm. That's skeptical, too. That's very skeptical. Uh, Cain. No, I wouldn't do Cain nah. either. No, uh-uh. Well. <laughs> yeah, probably not. What are some, uh, some names that you would name your kids from the Bible? Abraham. Abraham. Hmm. Ruth. Ruth. I- I'm going to go with Luke because it's easy to spell. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's you know? all right. I know that, right? He's going to bless the kids. You kids don't like to spell his name, you know? L-U-K-E, you know? You know, L-U- L-U-K when he get hip, you know? I guess we can go with John, you know? 
John. Yeah, John. John's all right. Okay, right. John's a good name. name I can spell that one. You can say it. <laughs> John's sometimes, a good name. No, I mess that one up sometimes. I put the O before the H sometimes, and it'd be, that's not spelled right. Or, or you take the H off. Take the H off, mm -hmm. or just leave the H there. John. John. <laughs> well, phonetically, it would still be okay. Yeah, uh, it really would. Did that teacher in there. Yep. It's, it's teacher funny. always come out. Teacher comes out. Anything you want to share, uh, with people that are going through this lockdown, anything that they can do to uh, kind of just uh, keep their minds off of the lockdown and just really enjoy the space that they're in? Well, actually, I, I, to be honest, to stay prayed up, you know, mm -hmm. um, enjoy life. You know, it's a lockdown, uh, but you can still have fun. So, you know, don't di get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. And I would have to say not tuning into the news as much. Because when you start to watch the news all day and about what's going on, it kind of will leave, leave you to become so discouraged. But finding other things to do, reading, getting outside, going walking. My daughter had me to do some Dove Smash TikTok thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, just, you know, finding fun things to do. Yeah, that's good. I enjoying those uh, TikToks. Uh, TikToks, understanding our kids' world mm -hmm. and what mm -hmm. they do and learning how to do those dances and everything. Uh, I thought that was a clock. No, nah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's one of the uh dub smash yeah the, yeah it the is dance moves off it is so, yeah so that's very creative uh, a lot of people are getting out walking i'm seeing more of my neighbors like never before you know i didn't know you lived on this block i, I didn't know you lived here either sir so you have to be careful out. you have yes. to be careful backing out your driveway it's so many people walking right. you, you might run over somebody yeah yeah so many people out there uh especially if your car is dirty yeah yeah especially and, and uh during this time, are, are we supposed to go to the car wash or? Well, you are washing up with soap. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, like I guess that. it's all right. I like that. I like that. All right. So any uh, closing thoughts as we uh, head off the air? Uh, I want to thank you for being on, uh, on the couch with Grizzy. And uh, it's been fun. Anything you would like to close out with? Uh, I would have to say just just continue to have fun. Uh, I know for us, we were talking about with our kids. I mean, we always interact with our kids, so there wasn't anything different uh, that we do because we're a family that's so involved. So just continue to stay involved with your family. And I believe that this has brought an even closer um, gathering of family to be able to spend more time together. So just embrace this moment of being able to spend more time with your family and with your kids and really getting to know more about each other. Amen. I, I like that too. And I just wanted to send a shout out to my children. Xavier and Summer, uh, when you get home, one person got to finish the kitchen, yeah. the other person got to the living room and the dining room. So Yep, those chores are still there. They're still there. We didn't do them. Yeah. Well, Mama did some of them for one person, so yeah. you got to finish them up. All right, all right. Uh, shots hey. out, shots fired. I mean, shots went out. Can I, can I say one more thing? You can say one more thing. Hey, hey we barbecued yesterday and had yeah. T-bone steaks and everything. So, you, Xavier, y'all y'all missed out, baby. <laughs> it was good, boy. <laughs> so he's, yeah, that's good. Getting the grill out on the grill, that's yeah. pretty good. So. Uh, what I'm going to do right here, I'm going to play that uh, leading song that you guys came into, and I'm going to allow you an opportunity to, uh, you know, do a jingle oh, as yeah. you exit the stage, if we could cue up Locked Up uh, song right now. All right, all as right. you exit, just do a little jingle. Yeah. A little jingle. <laughs> a little jingle. <laughs> a little jingle. <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle. <laughs> all right, thank you guys for being here. The Reagans, guys, give it up for the Reagans. Why do what I do? The feeling ain't getting no closer. No matter how far I go, my car is stolen. Yeah. Stolen All right. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to On the Couch with Grizzy, guys. I want to thank you for being here, really. I do. Online, God has provided this uh, vehicle where we can. Say hi to one another. We can stay, keep in contact with each other and keep texting, keep sending chats, keep talking to us in the thread. Let us know how you're doing. Call the church if you need anything. We're here for you. 
And I just want to uh, conclude with this, guys. Uh, Lamentations chapter 3. Lamentations chapter 3. It's uh, Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is like he's walking around with a clipboard and he's looking at outside uh, Jerusalem. He's looking at everything that's going on. And he says, I am the man who is seen in affliction by the rod of God's wrath. And he's talking about this bitterness that he has when he looks at the destruction of the neighborhood and the city and which the nation he lives in. He's looking at that. And what he says towards the end at 23 is, I'm reminded of this. I am not consumed. I have hope. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies are new every morning. So I would like to say this, this morning, y'all, when we woke up, I heard a preacher say this. We caught I called God red-handed. Yes, I did. I heard a preacher say, he said, I called God red-handed. What did he have in his hand? New grace and new mercy. Yes, he did. Every morning, God's grace and mercy is ever for us. And I want to thank God for that. Also, I, I'm just reminded as I think about that, uh, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And when you magnify something, you make it bigger then the situation is going down. So during these times, when we uh, watch the news, like Toya said, when we watch the news, be careful not to project and proclaim all the news has to say, but project and proclaim all that God has already said and all that God has already told us. So let's project that good news. God has good news for us. And just praise God. Magnify the Lord with me, making God bigger than the situation. And I, I like a song. It says... Uh, there's a praise on the inside that I can't keep to myself. He says, a holler stirring up from the depths of my soul. Excuse me if I seem a little giddy and maybe even strange, but praise is the way I say thanks. Say thanks to God like David did. Don't give up like Job did. And go to the king like Esther did. Esther went to the king for her people. So what we can do is go to the king on behalf of our people. Thank you for tuning in on, on the couch with Grizzy. We got coming up for you. A few minutes for you to go take a break, get some popcorn, get some, um, some uh, food, wash your hands, and come back to us at 945. And we're going to have an awesome worship experience. Right now, before we close out, I'm going to pray with you as we go. Let's pray, y'all. Dear Lord, I want to thank you for everyone who's online, God. God, we uh, know that you are bigger than the situation, God. God, we thank you for the opportunity that we can gather like this, but awaiting the time that we can gather again in this place, in this building. God, we don't take for granted the avenues that you have for us right now to navigate during this time. God, that we can still reach people. We can still send cards to someone. We can still meet people's needs in a real way, God. So as we serve one another, God, I pray that we trust you during this time, God, to not give up on the hope that we have inside of us, God. God, you are bigger than any situation. So God, give us strength to finish the work, God, that you have called us to. It's in him that knew no sin, yet became sin for us. And all God's people said, amen. And during this time, you will be seeing pictures of yourself that you sent in, family pictures that you sent in during the break. So take this time to view some of the pictures. Text somebody, tell them that we're on at 945. Send them the link. God bless you on the couch with Grizzly. I'll see you next time. They just love to learn And another child grows up to be Somebody you just love to burn Mom loves the both of them 
You see it's in the blood Both kids are good and brown Blood's thicker than the mud It's a family affair Still checking each other out. Hey, nobody wants to blow. Nobody wants to be left out. Uh huh. You can't leave 'cause your heart is there, but you you can't stay 'cause you've been somewhere else. You can't cry 'cause you look broke down, but you're crying anyway 'cause you're all broke down. It's a family affair. Somebody that just loves to learn, and another child grows up to be somebody you just love to burn. Mom loves the both of them. You see, it's in the blood. Both kids are good and brown. Blood's thicker than the mud. It's a family affair. Your heart is there, but you you can't stay 'cause you've been somewhere else. You can't cry 'cause you look broke down, but you're crying anyway 'cause you're all broke down. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. It's a family affair.
Somebody that just loves to learn And another child grows up to be Somebody you just love to burn Mom loves the both of them You see it's in the blood Both kids are good The mom Blood's thicker than the mud It's a family affair Still checking each other out Hey Nobody Wants to blow Nobody wants to be left out Uh huh You can't leave Cause your heart is there But you You can't stay Cause you've been somewhere else You can't cry Cause you look broke down But you're crying anyway Cause you're all broke down It's a family affair Somebody that just loves to learn And another child grows up to be Somebody you just love to burn Mom loves the both of them You see it's in the blood Both kids are good The mom blood's thicker than the mud it's a family affair. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. Your heart is there But you, you can't stay Cause you've been somewhere else You can't cry Cause you look broke down But you're crying anyway Cause you're all broke down It's a family affair It's a family affair It's a family affair
child grows up to be Somebody that just loves to learn And another child grows up to be Somebody you just love to burn Mom loves the both of them You see it's in the blood Both kids are good to mom Blood's thicker than the mud It's a family affair It's a family affair It's a family affair Your heart is there, but you you can't stay cause you've been somewhere else. You can't cry cause you look broke down, but you're crying anyway cause you're all broke down. It's a family affair. It's a family affair. It's a family
child grows up to be Somebody that just loves to learn And another child grows up to be Somebody you just love to burn Mom loves the both of them You see it's in the blood Both kids are good and bomb Blood's thicker than the mud It's a family affair Still checking each other out. I'm a, I'm a yeah. Nobody wants to blow. Lead me to the rock. Come on, help me sing tonight. Lead me to the rock. Come on, declare. Lead me to the rock. Hey, welcome to Macedonia. Good morning, brother Macedonia. I want to go there. Welcome, welcome to Macedonia. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Macedonia. Lead me to the rock. Come on, help me. Good sing. morning. Lead me to the rock. Good morning. Welcome to Macedonia. Welcome. We thank God for you for tuning in. It is my prayer that those who watch Grizzly on the couch for family. We had a great time for families to get together and have fun and participate in games and have a great time. We want to welcome you to the worship experience. This morning, we ask in God's presence. He's our firm foundation. Even through all of this, God is with us. God is our refuge and strength. He's a very pleasant help in the time of trouble call somebody tell them to tune in we pray at this hour you will be blessed you will be blessed and again i want to encourage you even though you're at home it is the time of worship your family's getting around this is family sunday please get in the spirit of worship as if you were here today we love you and we thank you for what's going to happen today god and we love you join me with prayer okay god we love you and we thank you for what you're doing during this time. We know that all things work together for the good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. Yet us bless those who are watching today. And if somebody don't know you, they'll get to know you as Lord of their life. Somebody who's discouraged, head may be lifted up. And that you may get the praise, the glory, and the honor. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Join with us now as our praising team leads us in praise and worship. Amen. Oh, 
how many we just want to praise him for all that he's done for us. Even in times like this, God still deserves the praise. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever and ever oh. Oh. Just, at this time, let's just give God praise. Because he bought us a mighty long way. He's kept us in all of this. He's kept us. He's still keeping us. He's keeping you right now. And so now we got to give God praise. He says, be anxious for nothing. But in prayer and thanksgiving, be thankful unto the Lord in everything. He got to give thanks. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for blessing, for blessing me. Yeah. I just wanna praise you, praise him forever, forever, ever and ever, and ever. Oh, and ever. For Restoring blessings, blessings and glory and honor and honor. Everything belongs to you. They all belong to you. Hey, yeah. thank, thank you, Jesus, Jesus. for blessing bless me. If Cheryl was here, she'd go blue. Oh, just, just wanna praise. I just wanna praise you. think about it the musicians gonna play just a little bit yeah. even in your home with your family we want you to be singing that because blessings and glory and honor they all belong to God we still got another day's journey that God has blessed us to have if you can't say nothing else in these times you can say thank you Jesus you still got life you still got health you still got your strength you still got the activity of your limbs you're in your right mind come on we got to give fine what we got to give god praise for in everything it says give god praise in everything every situation give god praise you may be confined to your home but god is there god is with us god has not yeah, leave us. he yeah, will never yeah. forsake it he will be with us always he come by to tell you that you're going to make it you're going to make it through a time like this you're going to make it through all you got to lean and depend on christ jesus because he's right there he's right there come on blessings Blessings and glory and honor and honor they all they all belong to you
He didn't stop being awesome. He's still awesome. And he can move mountains. So you know if he can move mountains, this and this little virus thing, he already got that thing under control. Come on, my God. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He keep me in the body. Hide me. me from the rain. Say that again. My God is awesome. He can move. He can move mountains. He can me. Keep me in the body. Hide me from the rain. Come on, say that one more time. My God. My God is awesome. He can move. He can move. Today I am forgiven. His grace, His grace is why I'm living. Praise His holy name. Oh, my God is awesome. He's awesome. 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 My God is awesome.
this past week on our social media page, if you have not liked our social media page, it's Macedonia Junior's Church. Please go like that page on Facebook. We have encouraged our families all week to please read and pray with your children. Read scripture every day and do a prayer every day. This next video, we have a family down in Junior Church who will explain how they incorporate the Word of God in their household. Enjoy. as a mother to teach my children about Jesus Christ and God it is not just the sole responsibility of the church to educate them about being saved but it is my duty for us to also have conversations with them at home about what they've learned in church and Sunday school and how they can best apply that to their life it is also my responsibility to share with them what I learned in adult church and how I'm going to apply that to my life so that I can lead them and guide them in the right direction. Tell me what you learned in Sunday school today. Today we learned about John 3.16 which says for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life and he was talking about how just because your, parent, your mom and dad might be believers of God that just that doesn't make you a believer of God. You have to believe in God for yourself. You have to go do discipleship and be baptized. But even though you're baptized, that doesn't mean anything. You have to spiritually, physically, and mentally believe in God. And that's what we talked about today. Okay, so what does that mean for you? What do you need to do? What I need to do is, like, just because, like, someone says, Oh, I'm a believer in God. Are you? You don't say, yeah, just to, just to sound cool. You gotta actually say why, and then you and then ask them like, do you are you a believer in God and why? Because people have asked me that at school, and I was like yes, and they're like okay, and then maybe people have asked me, and they're like yeah, and then I'll ask them a question like, have you been baptized, and do you know what it means to be a believer in God? And they'd be like no. Okay. So what about you, Sierra? Tell me what you learned. So today in Sunday school, we learned about Amos and how he warned the people um, when God's coming, it's going to be dark and things are going to be crawling on them and he's going to, you have to actually believe in him and how he's got, you say you're baptized, but you might not be, and well, you are baptized, but it doesn't mean anything. And how he has, he's gonna look in your soul, and we can't see in our soul. So he sees like all the sins and the dirtiness that we have done. And we also talked about how um, hell and how there's there. You, that's not the first place you go. It, um, and you waiting, and um, and then. You go to the fire of the lake of fire and how you just sit there and it burns and screaming and stuff in the dark. So hell is the first place you go and then you go to the lake of fire. Right. And people laugh it off and act like it's no big deal. Okay. So what does that mean for you? What do you need to do to apply this to your life? Um, to ask for forgiveness and do what we know is holy in the Word of God. Okay. So, similarly, we've been talking about the same thing for us. Um, we've talked about hell and the lake of fire, and we've talked about making sure that we are following God's plan for our life and making right choices and decisions and doing His will um, because sin separates us from God and sin equals death but Jesus paid that price for us on the cross so that we may go to heaven if we believe in him Amen Isn't that beautiful? On Family Sundays you see where families are studying 
and learning about God's word. So I want to commend that family and commend you also to use this time for family time, for families to study and get to know God's word. But now we're here at um, our condolences because even during this time of condolence, we have to understand that there are still families that are hurting. Death, where's your sting? Sting, where's your grave? Grave, where is your victory? The um, praise team, the musicians are going to play something. And as they play, I want you to join me as if you were here at home and just share with you some of the condolences that we've had this week and reach out to these families. Even though we can't come together, we cannot let social distancing distance our love. Our deepest sympathy is to June Buckner. Amen. Mother Buckner. If you're watching, Donald's Oglesby's, home one of their loved one. We pray for that family, family, family. Because when they hurt, we all hurt. Barbara, I don't know if you're watching, Trina, Deacon Ch Chucky and Deacon Trina Tresvon, Nola Faulkner and that whole family. They've had death in their family. Pray for them. Reach out to them. Send them cards. Call them on the phone. Let them know that when one hurt, we all hurt. Blessed be the God of all comfort who comforts us in any situation so that we can comfort others with the same comfort we ourselves have received from God. Deacon Tyler, Donna, Deacon Sean, Darian, Derricka, Meyer Franklin and that whole family also has experienced the death of their loved one Leroy Tyler Jr. Again Macedonia family and friends we cannot we cannot let this coronavirus divide us from helping each other for comforting each other during this time of bereavement and hurt for some folk and also, as we pray for those, there's other prayer requests. People are calling the church every day, needing help, scared, want to be prayed for. Church has been here. We have to be here for each other. Maybe you're tired, scared. Maybe you're the one in your family that everybody's leaning on you. And you're like, well, who do I lean on? That has to be rough. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. And also, too, we want to pray. Send your prayer requests in. And if you're a member of this church, or somebody over 60 years old, Deacon Joey Smith and the deacon and the deaconess are making sure that we get them what they need. Call them. Send them stuff. Making sure that they are connected to what we have. And I pray. I pray. And that you pray. Pray for our president of the United States. That's right. Donald Trump. Whether you agree with his politics or not. It's not a time. It's not a time. We pray that God would touch his heart as he leads us. Pray for our governor. But talk to him today again at 430. Pray for our, our, our mayor. Pray for the staff. Let me tell you something, Macedonia. You have an awesome staff awesome staff who is working feverishly to make sure that your needs are being taken care of and yet still trying to take care of their families so when we come back our church will be above the curve and we'll be ready to serve this generation pray Macedonia families wherever you are get together resident Patrick Riley to lead us to the throne and ask God's blessing over these things. Amen. Come on, Patrick.
using you are a good God. I remember a question I asked just uh, yesterday. What is God up to? And the answer was, he is still being good, Lord. Yeah. Even though we don't know how, we don't know exactly when, but we know that one day this will be over, Lord. Everything that was snatched from us as far as that was normal will be back, Lord. Um, and we will realize, Lord, and we are realizing that we are not in control, Lord. Um, and I think it's starting to humble all of us, Lord, understanding that we need to look to you, Lord, in the slow down and take time to observe who you are and worship you uh, properly, Lord. Lord, I'm praying for everyone that's under the sound of my voice, Lord, the prayer petitions and things that they're asking to you, Lord, in their quiet time, Lord, on a daily basis, Lord. Lord, I pray that once this is over, Lord, we will have some better spiritual disciplines in how we worship you, Lord, how we pray, how we fast, how we read, how we spend time with our families, Lord, how we think about our jobs, how we think about rest, Lord. Just give us those better spiritual disciplines that we need, Lord. Lord, the spirit is still going forth, Lord. You're still there. You never stop being there, Lord. So I pray that we can see you, Lord, that we don't step over people while we're trying to uh, take advantage of opportunities to help ourselves, Lord. Lord, I pray that we can help our families, Lord. Yeah. Lord, I pray for all the teachers, Lord. I pray for students, Lord, for parents, Lord, musicians, the staff here in Macedonia, Lord, the staff at all the other churches, Lord, who have to figure out new technology that they may not have used before, Lord. Lord, I pray for all those people who, who may not be able to see these things, but I pray that videos and DVDs and encouraging messages, text messages and emails go out to people who need it, Lord. We were not meant to be alone, Lord, so we need that personal touch, Lord. So I'm praying that you can wrap your arms around us, Lord. Squeeze us tight, Lord. Give us the comfort that we need, Lord, in this time where we are social distancing, Lord. Lord, I'm praying for Pastor Brooks and his leadership, Lord. Praying for that you give him guidance, Lord. Reduce the stress that comes with a situation as this, Lord, and all the other pastors in this city and in this nation, Lord. Praying for Pastor Brooks and his family. Um, I'm praying for all of our families. Thank you so much for all that you do, Lord. Lord, we want to say thank you in advance for when this is over and we get to rejoice again, Lord. As a matter of fact, we should be rejoicing right now, Lord. We should be rejoicing right now, no matter the circumstances, that we know that nothing, Lord, that is nothing, that is nothing, 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 Lord, and we should pray uh, continuously, Lord, pray without ceasing, Lord. So as I finish this prayer, Lord, just thank you, Lord. Thank you for being our Father. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. with us. Oh, Jesus, there is a name. There's healing in the name. Come on, sing it. Healing in the name. Healing. Break every chain, break every chain, 
break every chain. Oh yeah, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. And again, this is our Family Sunday. We welcome those who are on Facebook Live. We welcome those who are watching us streaming. We're excited to be able to get this worship experience to you. Now we can all worship through giving. Amen. Amen. We need your support through giving. Amen. The church has to continue to go. The church has to continue to go. We have a few announcements before we get into our offertorial period. Amen. Amen. What are our announcements for the week? We wanted to join us, too, on live stream uh, on Wednesdays. On Wednesdays, we will be coming to you on for live stream on Bible studies, uh, 2 Timothy 3.18, uh, but growing the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. When I preach, I want you to write your questions down. At 10 in the morning and 6.30, you can submit your questions live, and we'll try to deal with it as we get into God's word. Amen? And also, and the other announcement is that, again, tell families who are in need. We're still serving the community, following the CDC guidelines of social distancing, but there are so many families. My in fact, um, Harvesters reached out to us and asked us, could we take on another day? We're extending our hours. We're doing more uh, to make sure that there's a lot of families who are hurting. Uh, so we want to make sure that uh, happens. So please tell people on Wednesdays from 2 to 5, we will be serving families. And again, it is time to give. You can't be God-given no matter how hard you try. At home, don't tune me out. There is giving. Don't hold back on your giving. It is during this period that the church must continue to flourish. And people are in need. So if God has blessed you to give, there's many ways that you can give. And I want to thank those, so many of you, who have continuously give. I would encourage those to continue to give. Those who have not, please give. Give what you can. You may not be making what you're making. But you can give whatever God has put on your heart because there's so many people who are hurting and the work of God has to continue to go on. You can text to give or you can go online while I'm talking now or any time during the week. Not just during this period, but any time during the week. You can go to our website and give electronically. There it is right there. Give online on our webpage. Or you can text to give. Again, not just today. At 816-281-1223. And then you can enter a amount and fill that information that you're given. You can give in person. Tuesday through Fridays. Uh, come in. There's no touching. Social distancing. There's a box. Many of you are doing that. And I do appreciate that. Or you can mail it. A lot of you are mailing your offering in. And we really appreciate it. Because do your giving. We still have staff that needs to be paid. They have church. They have family. We have uh, members still in need who are getting laid off, whose salaries are being reduced, who communities, this is a great time for your gift. So as we go through this uh, period, we're going to sing just a little bit and allow you at home to do whatever you need to do. And those who are watching us, wherever you may be, please support us financially. We really, really appreciate it. Amen. Let's pray and ask God's blessing over this gift. Amen. God, we thank you. That in the midst of storms, your people still are allowed to receive blessings from you. And we know that little becomes much when we put it in your hand. I pray that you touch hearts today. Somebody who's listening, God, who's aware, who, who's scared that they might not make it, God. They're holding on. I pray that you touch them to have them to give. And have them to give and it shall be given to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together, and running over so they could be a blessing to other people. Thank you, God, for the abundance that you've given us. Even in the midst of this coronavirus, God, you still provide for our needs, and we are grateful for that. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. We are seeing this. Amen. Thank you so much for your giving. And again, you can um, give all throughout the week. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Everybody say bless, 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 bless,
go. We can. We can sound every song. Sickness and poverty. For the devil. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in your favor. Hey, hey. Let me hear you say late. Late in the midnight hour. Say God. God's going to turn it around. Say it. It's going to work in your favor. God, say girl, this is for you. Let me hear you say late. Late in the midnight hour. Say God. God's going to turn it around. And 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 around. Say late. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for reminding us. Get your Bibles out. It's preaching time. We want to hear from God. Thank you, Ashley. We know who holds our hand. We preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord. And ourselves is your service for Christ's sake. Good morning, Macedonia family and friends. On this Family and Friends Sunday, I'm excited about what God is doing. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of Esther? That's right. To the book of Esther. 
Amen. Let's see what God says in this fourth chapter in the book of Esther. I know it's a beautiful thing now seeing families gathered together getting into that word. Wake that teenager up. Bring that child together. Get in the room together and let's do this. Let's make the best out of this situation as we would hear on Family Sunday. Call your cousin. Call somebody. Say get in line. See what God has to say to us. Esther We'll turn to the book of Esther, the fourth chapter. Amen. Very familiar passage. It's a very, very, very familiar passage. Let's see what God's word um, has to say to us in the fourth chapter of Esther in the uh, 14th verse. I'll start reading from the 14th verse. And again, I want to encourage you. I really want to encourage you that on Wednesdays, Bring your questions. Amen. Let's see what God has to say to us. Let's see what God has to say to us on today. In the NIV translation, very familiar passage. If you remain silent at this time, relief or help and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows that you have come to your royal position. Here it is. For such a time as this. Let's pray. Let's go to God together. God of our weary years. God of our silent tears. God, we're in a pandemic. Unprecedented time. But you brought us this far. You didn't bring us this far to leave us. I pray, God, that families are strengthened as a result of this word. I pray, Father God, that no technological difficulties will stop those who are here on Facebook Live or streaming to get a word from you. Pray that somebody will be saved. I pray that somebody who is scared would be encouraged. Pray for that child who's wondering what's going on, will be enlightened. I pray, God, that they don't see John Leslie Brooks. Have them understand our millionaires may be used by you. Proclaim and thus said the word of God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let all God's people say, Amen. The coronavirus, no doubt, has turn many of our lives upside down. I know it has turned mine upside down. Our, reg our regular schedules of what we do, how we go, uh, has been turned upside down. It seems to be getting worse every day. I mean, you turn on the television, you hear about things. You know, it's almost like one of those Job days, you know. You, you, you grapple with what you can grapple with, and then the very next day or the next hour, Numbers go up, somebody else has it, or somebody else has died. It just seems to be getting worse and worse. But listen to me. I have good news for you. Really, I do. I do. I have good news for you. God is still in control. Yeah, that's right. I don't care what it looks like. God is still in control. And that's a reminder to some people. And, uh, uh, and good news to others who may not know it, who may doubt it, that God is still in control. And watch this. God's work should not stop during times like this. Romans 8.28, listen to me, listen to me. It says in Romans 8.28, it says in Romans 8.28, listen to me now. It says, all things work together for the good. For those who love God and are called according to his prayer. Let me, let me share what God has to say to us through the book of Esther. Through this book of Esther. Let me, let me share what God has to say to us through this book of Esther, okay? Through this book of Esther. We see here in the first chapter of the book of Esther, chapter 1, ch uh, 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 verse uh, 1, chapter 4. You know the story. Mordecai learned all that had been done. He tore his clothes put on sackcloths and ashes and went to the city wailing loudly and bitterly. 
I mean, he, he went in there welling and, 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 and welling in Because Haman, if we put our first reference scripture up, Haman, Haman, uh, our first reference had dispatched all were sent by couriers to all the king's providence with the order to destroy, listen to this, kill and annihilate, look at this, all the Jews. Young, old, women, children, on a single day. Haman wanted to wipe out all God's people in one day. And he had the edict and the power to do it. He had had the king to sign an edict that all God's people would be wiped out on one day. That's right. And to plunder all their goods. Just like this coronavirus. If we don't take it serious, and I hear people saying this all the time. Hear me, look at me now. Hear me, look at me. When I say this to you, when I say this to you, when I say this to you, okay? Look at me now. Put that, take that down. We need to take this thing serious. Just because God is still in control, don't mean we don't take this thing serious. We're, we're, we're in a serious time. Just like the Jews were. Haman meant business. And this coronavirus, if we do not do what we need to do, it's serious. It's serious. I ain't trying to scare you, but it's serious. And they can do great damage to young. We're finding out that it ain't just old people. Young people are getting it. Rich, poor, black, white, Republican, Democrat, different nations. It is a time of upheaval. A time of upheaval. And we have to take it seriously. We have to take it seriously. We have to take it seriously. And look what happens to Mordecai when he learned about how this, uh, uh, what situation he was in. I want you to see this. Look what happened to him. Look what he did. Look what he did. Look what he did. He tore his clothes, verse 1. Fourth chapter, verse 1. Put on sackcloth in the ashes. Oh, and by the way, for those who don't know, when in the biblical days, that was like mourner's clothes. You know, now you go to funerals, we wear anything. <laughs> we wear just anything. Uh, I'm going to be me. I'm going to be me. You wear just anything. But there, there was professional mourners. And there were people who mourn, and they put these clothes on. It meant that I am seriously hurting. It means that I'm hurt. And you've been to funerals before, and I've seen that hurt look on people's face at funerals. When a son, a daughter, a friend... A spouse has died. You know that look? Empty, hurt, wounded. That's what Mordecai was when he understood how serious this edict was that the king was in one day. Why about all the Jews? And he had the power to do it. He had the power to do it. Look at that. Look at verse 2. And I wonder what was your response when you understand the seriousness of this coronavirus? What is your response? Hmm. Let's look at verse 2. Look what he did. <laughs> look at what he did. <laughs> Where did he go? What was this? What was this? I know after he prayed, and I know you Christian folks and holy folks say, well, you prayed to God. Yes. Mordecai prayed because he was loved God. He prayed. Yes, he prayed. But after he prayed, because pray for that works is dead, you only pray so much, then you need to do something. Then you need to do something. You need to do something. So you just stay in the house and pray all day. It ain't going to do nothing. I know prayer works, but you got to put some feet to them prayer. So I understand the first thing he did was pray. I get it. I understand he prayed. But let's look at God's word in a time of trouble, in a time of seriousness. Look what he did. After he prayed, after he went to God, look what he did in verse 2. Look, look. He went as, only as far as the king's gate because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter. Where did he go? 
Walk with me, somebody. Where did he go? He went to a place where he knew he could get help. Look at me. Look at me, guys. Look at me. Hear me now. When you're in trouble, you go to people you know can help you. I don't know about you, but I get in trouble. I know who to call. I go to Jesus. I don't, as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody. Else. Jesus works through people. Jesus works through people. He giving us each other. He went where he knew he could get help. And where did he go? He said, listen, this girl that I raised, <laughs> this girl that I raised, she living high on the hall. She's living in the palace. Esther, Esther got some juice. Esther got some power. Esther's in a position where she can help us. Esther's in a position where she can help us. God uses people, plain, ordinary people. When you are in trouble, when this thing happened, guess what? God uses us to help each other. People who are in position of power. People who can help you. Somebody who's in a position of power. Look at verse 3. And I was studying this, and I thought it was very interesting, because the net says, throughout. For those who got the NEC, the net version, it starts off throughout. The NIV starts off in every, which means that um, this edict to kill all God's people to, in one day, it wasn't just for some people. Huh, you see the similarities with this coronavirus? Yeah, okay, come on. Talk to me, somebody. It ain't just your house. It ain't just the ghetto. It ain't just the rich folk. It ain't just America. It's in every providence. Everywhere you go. It's get, everybody's getting hit by it. In every providence, in every village, everywhere. Hard times came everywhere. Nobody was exempt from it. And this edict came from the king. Came. It came from the king. Came from the king. <laughs> and the response was great mourning. Not just mourning. And I love the way the NIV puts that together. It says great mourning. Great mourning. Among the Jews were fasting, weeping, and welling. Many lay in sackcloth and ashes. Okay? Wow. What was your response? What was your week like? I need to see these people. That I want them to see me. Come closer. I, I want them to see me. I want them to see me. Okay? If you can, please. What was your week like? I don't, I don't, yeah. What is your week like? What is your week like? Crying every day? What is it like? See, there's a parallel in the Bible. Through every providence, there's weeping. I talk to friends all around this country, pastors, and every church and every community is grappling with this. Because this edict is going out. But Mordecai says, I know where we can get help. I know where we can get help. I know where we can get help. Isn't it good that God always allows a place where we can get help? You can get help. There's a place you can get help. Look at verse 4. Esther's eunuchs and female attendants came and told her about Mordecai. <laughs> when Esther found out, the people who were in the people who were in power that could help the people who heard about it Esther who was in the palace when she heard about this when Esther heard about this when Esther heard about this she was in great distress she was in great distress walk with me now walk with me somebody look at me now look at me she was in great distress okay she was in great distress why because the, the people who is the power to help us take the verse down people who is the power to help us okay I, I want these people to see me because I want to connect with them because people are hurting, okay? So watch this now. She was in great distress. She was in great distress. She was in great distress. And look what she did. 
And I don't mean to offend anybody, but I'm just giving you what God has given me. Look what she did. A person who is in a position to help a rough situation. Look what she did. Look what she did in verse 4. Look what she did. She sent clothes and put him, it said, put these clothes on. <laughs> take off the sackcloth and ashes. Put these clothes on. You, you take these mourner clothes off. Take the here, here. I'm in a position to help you, and this is how I'm going to help you. This is how I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you some clothes so you can take out those clothes so you won't be weeping in the morning. And I want tell him change clothes. Take those mourner clothes off. Change clothes. <laughs> uh, brothers and sisters, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Don't get it wrong. That was a nice gesture. A very nice gesture. But it wasn't enough. Hear my heart. It wasn't enough. It's not enough. When people are hurting, when people need help, people are crying. She's in a position of power. And she's sending clothes. Change your clothes. Here's a nice outfit. No need to warn. That's externally. But on the inside, my heart is broken. Clothes ain't going to do nothing for me. Clothes ain't going to do nothing for me. Esther. And, 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 and Mordecai. <laughs> and, and, and I got to say this to you. Mordecai, Mordecai, just like this coronavirus, this thing is serious. He, he goes to the gate, he, he comes to the gate, he's hurting, he knows that this thing can't be stopped, and they got the power to do it, there is no solution to help, he comes, and he says, tell Esther, she's in power, she can help us, please help us, and they come down, and I can see the excitement on his face, what does she say, what does she say, what does she do, oh here's some clothes, what? Huh? She said, put these clothes on. Here, so you have to have the more regular uh, sidecloth of classes on. Oh. And this is John Brooks, okay? It ain't in the Bible. This is John Brooks. Man, you clothes. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, I appreciate your gesture. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, but... He said, I can't take those, Esther. And watch this. I love you, brothers and sisters. And you know where I'm going with this. Somebody come to you. And you're in a position to help them. You give them a dollar to get a 99 cent burger. And you got the power to help pay their rent. And you reach in your pocket. And you say, come on, let's go to Burger King. Let's go to McDonald's. <sighs> I'm glad you want to feed me. That's good. Look at verse 5. Verse 5. Then Esther summoned Hathak, one of the king's eunuchs, and signed her tender. her. And her and found out what was troubling Mordecai and why. See, because Esther's heart, watch me guys, was really good. See, and some of you guys' hearts are real good. Esther wasn't trying to uh, insult him. She wasn't. And in this coronavirus, when we help people, I don't think we're trying to uh, uh, insult people. So it goes back to Esther. It says, Esther, what's going on? She said, here's your clothes, Esther. What? Why won't he take my clothes? Why won't he help? Why won't you accept the dollar? Why, wh wh what's going on? She said, well, no, no. Find out what's really going on with him. Find out what is really going on with him. To Esther's credit, 
She says, I need to look deeper into this. And I wonder, instead of listening to every one of these uh, rumors that's going around, have you dug deep into situations to really find out what is going on with people or what is going on with this virus? Or you just listen on rumors on Internet? Don't do it, my brothers and sisters. Dig deeper yourself and say, let me educate myself to find out what's really going on. So I don't know how to help because you may be wanting to help, but you're not helping in an appropriate way. So Esther, to her credit, says, hold it, wait a minute now, he's crying. That is not good enough. Let me see how I can really help him and learn the situation. Don't listen to our president if you want to find out how serious this thing is. Don't listen to him, please don't. Because he'll make you think that it's, you know, just fly weight. <laughs> don't, don't, please don't. Okay? Look at verse 6. Mordecai. The verse 6 to verse 8. Mordecai, verse 7. Told him, look at that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mordecai, when you're hurting, don't hold back. He told him everything that had happened. Including the exact amount of money that Haman had promised to pay the royal. See, not only did Haman put the thing out, Haman said, I'll pay money to the king's treasure to get these people out of here. He was that serious about hurting God's people. And Haman says, Here's the exact. And I wonder, and I wonder, Macedonians, family, and friends, look at me. I appeal to you today. I appeal to you today. Do you really know what people who you worship with, some of your brothers and sisters, some of your coworkers, some of your neighbors, do you really know what they're up against? Some of them have lost their jobs. Some of them are about to lose their house. Some of them now got to live on a reduced salary. Some of them have lost their loved ones and can't even attend a funeral. Some of them got loved ones in the hospital and can't even go touch them. Some of them are living with fear and anxiety and can't sleep at night. Some people are having to have prescriptions because of panic attacks. I talk to some people who are thinking about suicide. Suicidal thoughts. Loneliness. A lot of Christians are having crises in their faith. Do you really know what we're up against? Do you really know? And Mordecai is saying, if you understood, then you wouldn't be offering me clothes. Not in a time like this. If you really know the situation, church, do we really know what God is doing? Do we really know the pain that people are up against? Do we really know what's going on? Marriages. Probably broke it up. Stress. But look at verse 8b. Mordecai says, listen, that last part of that verse. He also gave him a copy of the text of the edict for their annihilation, which had been published in Susa, to show to Esther. He says, I want to show you the facts, what we're up against. Church, do you know what we're up against? My brothers and my sisters, explaining it to you. And one of these days, I'm going to bring on one of our doctors, Eleanor Elizabeth. She decided to come on, and she can explain it to you better than I can. And some of our health professionals can explain to us what we're up against. On one of these days, we're going to bring on on a Wednesday or a Sunday. Ellie, I hope you're watching. To explain to us what we are up against. T. Rich, tell us what we're up against. Sharita, tell us. He said, explain to her, this is what we're up against. We ain't seen nothing like it. Mordecai's like, oh my God, this is what we're up against. This is what we're up against. Look at verse 8b. 
So Esther explained it to her. And he told them to instruct her. <laughs> Watch this. This is how serious it is. And I hope that you're listening. Don't tune me out. Put that back up there if you could. That verse, if you could put that verse back up there. He says, I am so serious that we need help. And she's in a position to help us. Tell her to go to for the king's presence. And she says, watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Hear my face. I want you to see this. If you could. I want them to see me. He says, tell her to go. Tell her, just don't go in there. Tell her, no, 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 no. Don't go in there. Go in there and what? Big. You know, people don't beg unless it's serious. That's how, that's how bad people are hurting. He says, go in there and beg. He says, go in there and beg. Verse 8, B. Go to the king's presence to beg for mercy and plead for her people. I guess this morning I've come to you pleading for God's people. This is what God has told me to ask you. Those who are in the position to help, however you can help, help! Help us! I don't know who sung that song, but I ain't too proud to beg. I ain't too proud to beg. Mm -mm. Who sung that? I wish y'all was here to tell me. Somebody had to type it in and tell me. Aretha Franklin. Aretha didn't sing that. That's my girl. Aretha didn't sing Aretha Franklin. Prince. Somebody said Prince. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The temptations. Hey. Mm. <laughs> temptations. I ain't too proud to beg. Hey. He says, you got the power. Esther, go in there and beg. Go in there and beg. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. On this morning here, I ain't too proud to beg. If it's going to help God's people, and I get calls and I get texts, and I understand what families are up against, and I'm here to tell you today, some of us can help because you are in a position to help people. You are in a position to help you may not be in a royal palace like Esther. And you may say, I'm not a millionaire. Okay, you don't have to be a millionaire to help. Here it is. This is what some of us are probably doing. And I would urge you against it. I urge you against it. I urge you against this. Your brothers and sisters, he says, pray. And look at verse 9 and 11. What is your response? What is going to be your response this morning? Esther's response between verse 9 and 11, she made excuses. She made excuses. She made excuses. Look at verse 10. Look at verse 11. This is what she, all the king's officials and the people of the royal providence Know that any man or woman who approaches the king in the inner courts without being summoned, the king has but one law. Death, unless the king extends a golden scepter to them, spare their lives. 30 days have passed since I've called to the king. See what she's saying? I got the power to help you. But I don't want to come out of my comfortable position. Oh, my God. God, why did you give me this to preach today? Listen to me, my brothers and my sisters. Some of you in a position to help some of our brothers and sisters who are hurting. She was in a position of power. And you may say, well, Esther was a queen. Here, 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 here. Some of us, and I pray that you're not doing this. When the time to give, some of you have not lost your job. You still give it 100%. You still get 100% of your pay. And there's brothers and sisters who are not who are struggling and you just hoard and hoard because you're scared what might happen. 
And we got people that worship God together, people who are coming to the church, looking to the church, and God's people are saying, even though I got enough money saved up and I got resources and I got clothes and I got food and I got toilet paper, I got to just keep this and I got to be comfortable. I can't give it because what would happen to me? I can't move from my comfortable position. Forget you and your family. That's what you're saying. Esther says, I can't move out of my comfortable position. And I'm not asking you to do nothing dangerous to hurt yourself. If your, if your salary is reduced, don't stop giving nothing. You can still give something. Because your brother and your sister is in a rough situation. And watch this, I'm going to get out of here, but I'm going to end it to you. And it's shouting material, what happens when God, people give during the storm. Esther said, I can't do it. Esther said, I like this royal job. I can't, I can't do it. I like, I like having attendance. I like being in here. Sister girl said, I like it. I like it. I like it. I, hey, hey, hey. I can't get out there with y'all. No, but guess what? Esther was a Jew too. Sister girl was a Jew. We went down to Mordecai. Mordecai hurt. Mordecai cried. Look at verse 12. When he got the word, look at verse 13. Help me. <laughs> Y'all know the story. Grizzly, I wish I could have been there. He's hurt. He's, he's, he's got somebody that can help him. He said, uh, Esther said, no. She ain't doing it. She ain't putting herself out there for you. She can't break rules. She like living in her cush house. She can't do it. She got enough toilet paper. <laughs> she got food. She, 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 her, her bills are paid for. Her. She getting 100% of her salary. And she ain't even working. I'm talking to some of y'all. I ain't going to say no names, but some of you getting 100% and ain't even going to work no more. Mm. And there's some people who are working at home getting 40, 50% of their salary. And you holding back. <laughs> Look at Mordecai. Put that back up there, please. Let me put in John Brooks' words. Shh. Don't think you can't catch the coronavirus. <laughs> Don't think you can't get laid off. Don't think that your salary can't get cut. Don't think you can't lose your house. You got it today. Don't think it can't happen to you. He said, listen, girl, you up in the palace. Don't think you're going to escape. Because you and the Jew, and I know this is a message for us. He says, don't think that you're going to escape just because you're in God's house. Just because we're comfortable today. Me and my wife were just talking the other day. We had uh, some, uh, some toilet paper. And she says, baby, how can we bless somebody else with this? Because I'm a man just like you a man. And any man who's watching, you want to take care of your family. I want to take care of my family. I want to make sure Terry John has. And I'm teaching Ben to make sure Ash and his family has. But I ain't hoarding. I bring in some church. said, okay, that's enough. God, we got, and I say, yes. And we start thinking about how can we bless somebody else. We don't say, oh, let's save some up for, for December of next year. He said, don't think that it can't happen to you. You can get laid off. And you want somebody to help you. And here's the part as I close. He says in verse 14, but if you decide not to give, if you decide to remain silent and hold on to your stuff, don't get it twisted. Relief and deliverance for God's people will come from another place. And you and your family won't have no say in it. See, one of the beautiful things about this, please tune in to me. I'm, uh, I, 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 I'm, listen to me. They can see me. I want, I want them to see what I'm saying. Listen to me. When this is over, wouldn't it be beautiful if people can say, the church 
took care of us. My church. Somebody's church. People run to the church and the church has to say, we don't have. And I know the church has to take a hit. But all I'm saying is that people are running to the church like never before. Wouldn't it be nice if they could get a response that the church could give them toilet paper, the church could give them food, the church has resources. And I'm not saying the government shouldn't do their part, but I'm saying the church, people who are running to the church now like never before, this is a great time for us to share the gospel. So don't hold back with your resources. Give. And then Esther, her credit. Esther, to her credit. <laughs> I hope you're here. I'm going to leave it with this. She says, and I quote, fast. I'm, I'm still scared, but guess what? I'm going to see the king. I got enough for me and my family. And I'm going to make sure we have. But we're going to keep giving. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep hoping. We're going to keep checking on other people. I'm in a position where I can help folk. And if I perish, let me perish. Y'all know the story. You know the story. Esther said, I got to help. And she moved from comfortability. And she went to go see the king. And the shouting material. As the musicians come, God had already went before her. God will take care of you. If you give, if you support families in need during this, during this pandemic, God ain't going to let you not have. God will take care of you. When Esther got there, God had already went before her. God had already went before Esther. My fact, real quick, you know, he wasn't supposed to go see the king. She walked in there. Y'all who know the Bible? The king was like, girl, fine. Mm. <laughs> she was like, you can come here anytime you want to come. And she had him to do what he wasn't even supposed to do. King can't overturn the edict. God will do the impossible. God will do the impossible. Stop trying to figure it out. Help God's people. It don't have to be much. Whatever you have, little becomes much. And when God does it, his people have. Because there are a lot of brothers and sisters who are hurting. Let's not just give our phone calls. Let's not just give our, our, our time. Let's give of our resources. We have to give of our resources to help each other. That every family. Every family will be taken care of. I appeal to you today. People will be taken care of. And they will say, God provided for me. I love you. If you want to accept Christ, Tim, whatever you guys want to say. I know there's a natural response to shriek back and say, ooh, I'm scared. But we can't. If you're looking for a church home, call us. 241-1431, extension 300. Or if you want to accept Christ, God will bless you. Bring your questions. Macedonia, let's give so we can take care of those who are in need. And you might not be able to give what you can, what you used to give, but you can give something so that other people can receive from God. Let's not hoard our resources and our toiletries and our food and our stuff. Is there somebody here? Give yourself away. To you I belong. I give myself. So somebody else, somebody else can have. I'm not asking you to do it out. I'm asking you to help somebody else. Don't be scared. God will take care of you. God will take care of you, your family. Make sure you have. Don't hoard.
to you I belong God during this pandemic I pray that God's people will take care of each other I know economic times are hard that's more reason to trust God not to hoard I give myself myself you're in a position to help God's people do it Amen God we come now thank you for whoever responded that you would touch our hearts with our resources, whatever they may be, limited may be, that we would do something so somebody else can have. And you would supply all of our needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus. And that somebody may get to know Christ through this pandemic because you took care of their needs. And the Holy Spirit can draw them. God, I love you and I thank you for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, I love you. I want to keep in contact with you. Family Sunday, enjoy your family. Bring Sunday, we'll talk about that. We got a lot of families in need. And the church can do its part. The church can't do everything. Surely the government will help, but we can do our part. Amen. Breeze, please sign up for Breeze. I like to keep in contact with you through letters and videos. I hope it's encouraging you. Please sign up for Breeze. Call the church now and say, I want to sign up for Breeze. Give us your email and we'll connect you to stay. What's the name? Hey, as we go off, what we're going to do today, as we sing our song, we are one on Family Sundays. We're just going to show some of those pictures and I'll see you on Wednesday. Amen. Come on, stand up, Macedonia, at Family Sunday. Love you, Macedonia, for such a time as this. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one Look at those beautiful families. In the spirit. Caldwell family. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity. Cooper and family. Cooper. Tanya, Maurice, love, T- TK, Dad Deontay, Hudson's, Chris, Hudson's, my peeps, Hudson's, I love you, Johnson's, JJ, Cliff, we will work, J Morgan, Shayla, we Sire Neely and her friend Demetrius. We will work side by side. Macedonia family, preachers, Porter, Weaver, Mac Moore. Darwin and Marie. Each one's pride and no no. Power family. Misha, Edwine, Toya, Reagan. strong we will walk we will walk with each other we will walk we will walk hand in hand hand in hand we will walk with each other with each other we will walk we will walk hand in hand and together we will spread the news that God is in our land and now know we are Christians by our love, our love and they'll know we are Christians I said, come on Tim, how would they know Timmy? Yeah. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. I love
know we are Christians by our love. Amen. Oh, yeah. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let every heart say, Amen. peace and love.